Right, okay, so we uh, just did a little video where we ended up using the uh, Vertex Interpolator node. Um, so I thought I'd do another quick video, maybe explaining what exactly that is. So it was uh, added to the engine in 4.16, and there's a little bit of information in the release notes. Um, but doesn't have any official documentation yet, as far as I can see. So uh, I'll explain it as best as I understand it. Um, but apologies if I get anything not quite right. So, um, yeah, so the release notes here explains what it's doing. Um, you kind of need to know a bit about what it already is. So let's go right back to uh, how Unreal actually does its rendering. Um, so I've got this. Uh, this great article here, GPU performance for game artists. Um, if you're interested in sort of the techie side of, of game art and how things are rendering, you don't want to be a uh, render programmer. Um, it's good to have a little bit of knowledge about how stuff works with shaders and, and things. So um, do check out these kind of things. But I want to highlight this image here. So the way Unreal is going to render things, or any game engine or 3D sort of viewpoint thing is going to render things. Um, so first, it's going to take all the the vertex information. <laughs> and kind of draw those points in space uh, and then it does a process, what it calls here, rasterization and actually then fills those um, those points in with polygons uh, and then it does a thing called pixel shading sometimes they're called uh, fragment shading um, these are sometimes called fragments um, and that's where it actually draws the the, the, um, the colour information and the, and the roughness and all those things that are done per pixel so um, basically the important thing to remember is there's two steps to this. There's the vertex shader, and then there's the pixel shader. Um, and some things we can do on the vertex shader. So um, when we do things like world position offset, um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, we're moving things on the vertex shader at this point in the render pipeline. Um, and what's important to know here is there are an awful lot of less vertices than there are pixels. Here, three vertices makes up, I don't know, maybe 50, 100 pixels. Um, so anything you can do on the vertex shader is going to be a lot cheaper. And that's why you sometimes get things like vertex shaded lighting, um, world position offset using moving the vertices versus world displacement, which is moving things at a sort, of, sort of a per pixel level, but using tessellation. Anyway, um, but the important thing to remember, yes, is vertex shading is cheaper. So this is where we might want to use the vertex interpolator. And what we're going to do is we're going to move the, the calculations from the pixel shader to the vertex shader, where it can be a little bit cheaper, um, or it can give us access to things that wouldn't work in the pixel shader. So, as in the last video, we took the object position and applied it to a um, painted foliage. The foliage reads the object position in the pixel shader as being the um, the center point of all the foliage. But if you do it through the vertex shader, it takes the individual foliage objects. Um, not quite sure why, but that's what it does. Um, not sure if that's an optimization or, or what, but it does allow us to use the object position in the vertex shader to do the things we wanted to do, like we did in the last video. So, um, that's what it does. Let's have a quick demo and see how that works. So, I have here just the diamond gradient function. Um, it takes two UV gradients and creates a diamond, multiply them together, and I have it here applied to these planes. That all makes sense. Fine. If I run that through the vertex interpolator, few things are going to happen. Let's apply that to apply it to the world. Um, for a start it goes red. So for some reason the vertex interpolator, if you plug in a single float value, um, it will interpolate that as the red channel of a three vector. If you plug in an actual three vector, it seems to respect that. I'm not sure why, um, but just something to note. If you're only plugging in single values, you're going to expect to get red at the other end. Obviously, we can just mask this out and go back to white, which is what we plugged in in the first place. So, we can see we're getting three quite different results, once they've loaded, for our vertex interpolator. So that's because we've got different numbers of vertices in these planes. This one, if I just jump to wireframe, um, you can see only has four verts. This one, if I can select it, has a lot of vertices, so it's quite heavily gridded. And this one in the preview, don't know how easy that is to see, but it has four by four. So what's happening is it's taking each of those vertex positions, checking it against the the gradient that we had before, and rather than getting this nice smooth per pixel result, we're getting a 
really low res chunky jagged result because it's only checking each vertex um, and the, the pattern we're getting here this diag diagonal lines this is how vertex shader gets interpolated so the the vertices are here black and then sort of black and white and, and the mid grays um, and the triangulation we can see that's the triangulation of the mesh and you can see how it's kind of shading across those so um, yeah this one here obviously completely black it only has four verts so it's only checking that outside so all that information in the middle of where our gradient is is lost um, on this so that's what the vertex interpolator is doing um, we could use it with for example this texture you can see the same thing it's very low res um, not sure why you would obviously when you're doing per pixel stuff with textures you kind of want that to be per pixel um, information to be coming through so um, but we could for example do this and you get something much lower res uh, and like I say this is cheaper so it's used for optimizing your your materials where you can sometimes you need to have or you can uh, afford to have your calculations done on the uh, on the vertex shader instead um, lastly there's this note here pre-skinned local position um, even says in the tooltip only accessible for the vertex shader so certain functions in Unreal um, are specifically designed to only work on the vertex shader again probably an optimization not a graphics programmer so I'm not 100% sure why but if I then plug that in um, so this pre-skinned local position I think I'll do a video about this later um, if I go over to my animated guy over here um, this object has just the local position plugged in as his emissive uh, and this time we're using the pre-skinned local position and you can see if I just simulate the, uh, the colors of this object the local position is being applied before the animation um, and this requires the vertex interpolator to get that information um, useful for doing things like splat maps and damage decals and things on your character you don't want them to be projected on a foot and then slide around as the guy runs but um, again I think that's a topic for another tutorial so um, that's possibly more of an explanation of what the vertex interpolator does than when you might use it um, I haven't used it myself that much except like I say in examples like we'd used earlier um, where this information is calculated differently on the pixel shader to the vertex shader and we needed it on the vertex shader um, to work with foliage um, check out my last video for that um, and yeah hopefully that explains a little bit of what it's doing um, it's probably quite an, quite an advanced topic um, there was a, an old technique um, which this is kind of replacing uh, which is to use custom UVs so um, if I go back to the release notes uh, this is an example here where you used to be able to use custom UVs and then you plug your your, in, your data your, your your math whatever it was you were doing into your custom UVs and then you could read that custom UV data back using the text code node uh, and that would allow the same process to happen so this data down here would be calculated on the vertex shader and then read back up here well that's been replaced by this vertex interpolator node um, and you can see how it's a much cleaner easier workflow um, but again quite an advanced thing so yes hopefully that explains what it's doing um, if I do find that I'm using it I will probably highlight that because um, I think it's quite an interesting thing to be doing um, but yeah material uh, optimization is another okay whole topic by itself so uh, I hope that was at least interesting um, maybe you aren't going to start using the vertex interpolator in loads of your materials but it's always good to know how these things work um, and what's sort of available um, for things like this where I sort of noticed that the vertex shader side of it was working and the pixel shader wasn't well that, that instantly flags in my head oh maybe I could use the interpolator to get the pixel shader data I want onto the vertex shader no other way around the vertex shader data that I want onto the pixel shader um, cool I uh, hope that was interesting if not maybe that helpful um, and always questions comments etc and I will see you all next time